Welcome back, y'all, to the Kempire Daily YouTube channel. Hold on one second, y'all. Let's make sure we got this together so y'all can see me. Hold on. Give me one. What's going on? There we go. <laughs> Camera's acting up today, y'all. Here we go. What's going on, everyone in the chat? Appreciate everyone being here. We are live. Welcome back to the Kempire Daily YouTube channel where you get daily and consistent hot topics in music, entertainment, reality, TV, and so much more. We just posted a new video talking about Chrissy Teigen and Michael Costello. Yes, Michael Costello's acting well, I wouldn't say he's acting up. Chrissy is apologizing. Michael Costello is calling her out, but now people are calling Michael Costello out. We will talk more about Michael Costello. If you missed that video, head on over to the channel, you can probably deal YouTube channel, so you can check those that detail out. Uh, TikTok, head on over to the Kempire Daily YouTube channel. We're live. They were also live on Facebook, the Kempire and Kempire Daily on Facebook. What's going on, everyone? I see everyone already in the chat. We're gonna, we're gonna do a recap of Erica Jane's documentary. I don't want it. It's not even Erica Jane's documentary. It's a documentary about Erica Jane and Tom Girardi. And I stopped by Up and Adam this morning, well, this afternoon to talk about it. And I didn't realize how mad I was. <laughs> but before we get into that, hey, everyone in the chat, I see Barry, I see St. Jay, I see R. Craig, I see Janice, Monica, I see um, Tara, Diana, of course, Jamie, 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 not sure. DRS is in the building. What's going on, everyone? Yes, Ronald Richard did drop some news, and we're going to talk about that first. We're going to talk about that first. Barry, we missed you. I've missed y'all. What you been up to? Hanging out with Fran and Nail. <laughs> uh, thank you so much in the chat for wishing me a blessed day. Let's hope it is a blessed day. These YouTube streets are still hot. <laughs> Let's get into this breaking news. If you're just joining us, we're talking about the Erica Jane documentary, but Let's get into the breaking news. Ronald Richards, as you know, is been covering, you know, he has been covering this case and this whole drama. He, he covers a lot of Housewives drama, but specifically, he's very, very involved and now officially involved in the Erica Jane situation. Let's, let's just get into what Ronald Richards said on his Twitter a moment ago, literally almost, almost two hours ago. He posted less than two hours ago. Let's get into that. Let me just go to his Twitter. Look, let me go to his Twitter. Oh, wait, I have the tweet here. Never mind. I don't have to go to his Twitter. I have the tweet. I did my homework. Okay. So for those that are just joining us, we are talking about this breaking news. Shout out to Ronald Richard, who was an attorney following this case and now directly involved in some in salvaging the money. And we're going to talk about the money. I don't know if Erica Jane could watch this documentary, and I doubt she's going to watch it because... That means she would have a heart because how do you watch this document? I felt for all of those victims. I felt for all of those victims. And I'm glad that they did this documentary, ABC News and Hulu, for streaming it. But I don't know how you could watch that and live the lifestyle that you're living. I would give them everything. Even if it was my money, I'd give it to them. I'm like, look, I can't, I don't want that blood money. I don't want that on my hands. But we'll get into that. You see, I'm, I'm very impact. I watched it once and I meant to watch it twice. I just didn't have enough time to, you know, I like to watch these things multiple times before I report on them, but I didn't have the time, but I feel like I've researched it enough. I feel like I've been following the story enough. I discussed it with Up and Adam earlier. I can talk about it, but it's not the way that I normally would. We already have a hundred people in the chat like this video. It's an easy and free way of supporting the channel. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe. You're getting daily and consistent hot topics here on the channel. And we have moments like this where we have breaking news. Ronald Richards posted this on his Twitter earlier today saying this, breaking, Erica Jane, and he tags her. Damn. Damn, he tagged her. I wonder if she hasn't blocked. Does Erica Jane have him blocked? Anyways, Erica Jane's counsel is moving to withdraw in the Thomas Girardi bankruptcy as well. Here is a copy of the motion below the Hulu special also aired last night. It was not flattering. In fact, sickening in many people's opinions. Hard to watch the pain. 
And for those of you that are wondering, uh, the court document that he, look, I try to read it, but I'm not an attorney, y'all. I tried reading it, but I'm not an attorney. But basically, her attorneys are withdrawing and their their motion was uh, approved and accepted. All right, let me see if I can get this for you guys. I have the document somewhere. Oh, here it is. <laughs> One second. And I, and shout out to you guys that, that, that are in my DMs and send these things to me as well. Look, I'm going to pretend like I'm Emily D. Baker for a second. <laughs> Shout out to Emily D. Baker, my Taurus sister. I love her. And I love how she breaks these things down. Shout out to all of the legal nerds as well. Um, I'm not going to break this down because I'm not a lawyer. But I wanted to show you the document. I wanted to show you the document. And this is the bankruptcy case uh, against Tom Girardi. And Erica Girardi's attorneys have withdrew from it. A withdraw this was a with eh, withdrawal motion. This is a mess. And it was approved. This was approved because I went to because I was wondering too. I was like, what does this mean? What does this mean? And you can rely on the comment section because someone would say, okay, wait, what does this mean? Wait, what what wait, wait, what? Does this mean Erica's lawyer doesn't want to represent her anymore? Am I getting this right? And then another person replied, Yes, and the motion was granted. The motion was granted. Y'all see what I'm reading here? Someone said, I really wish I had Hulu. Don't worry, Charlene. Come, look, come, come to the Kempire Daily YouTube channel. So this is the actual document. This is not a good look for Erica Jane right now. She needs the proper representation right now, and it doesn't seem as if she has it doesn't seem as, as if she has it let me go here y'all <laughs> i love you guys the erica is in danger girl more than day in danger i really wanted to title that uh title that this this live if you're just joining us we are talking about erica jane and her i no, i hate calling it her documentary it's not her documentary it's a documentary about her but also her soon-to-be ex-husband tom girardi Let's get into this. Let's get into this documentary, The Housewife and the Hustler. It's not a good look for, for Erica Jane, Erica Girardi. It's not a good look at all because the way that they paint this picture of, of this woman is someone that was flashy, someone that was spending all kinds of money. They also have a clip of a deposition that Tom Girardi just did back in fall where he admits that he had 80 million, maybe 50 million. I'm not sure how he doesn't know the difference between 80 and 50. Was it 80 or was it 50? Was it 50 or 40? How much money did you have in cash? He said he had 80, uh, maybe 50 million dollars in cash. Okay, all right, Tom. And now he has nothing. Now this man has nothing. Now this man has nothing. And he also had $50 million in stock. For so Tom, they didn't show this part. Where did the money go, Tom? Where did the money go? ABC News, this is where you lost me. You opened this documentary with Danielle Staub, the Real Housewives, of, former Real Housewives of New Jersey star. You open the documentary with Danielle Staub. Why? Why? Can someone in the comments tell me why? I get it. I get why you would want to. It gives you entertainment value to grab people in. I get that. Because she was probably the only laughable person. Because even uh, Dana Wilkie, I can understand why she would be a part of it. Because she was a part of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And she knows these people. And based on what Up and Adam told me earlier today, she says that there was a lot that she said that they cut out. A lot of juicy stuff. So maybe Danielle Staub said some juicy stuff. I don't know what she could say. The only similar similarity that these women had or, or familiar... Or familiar space was that they were on Watch What Happens Live together. 
and they worked at the same strip joint. And honestly, it would have been funny if Danielle was a part of this documentary and she actually added funny commentary. I was not interested. I wasn't entertained by Beverly being a part of this. I was not entertained by that. I do like this picture though. And I'm glad I was able to find a cutout so I can be in the picture with her. And this is this was a bad start for me because I really was going to watch this documentary with a serious, you know, a serious eye because I was like, okay, ABC News is involved. They have people like Sonny Hostin. They had Chris Darden. You remember Chris Darden from the whole uh, OJ Simpson's trial? They had him. They had some other attorneys. And everyone else added so much substance to this documentary, but they opened up with Danielle Staub. You guys are so Hollywood. So Hollywood. Everyone in the chat is saying Danielle's trying to stay relevant. Let me just see some of these comments, y'all. Because y'all made me laugh. Hold on. A Canary says, uh, Danielle probably lied and said she had some scoop and couldn't... Uh, and couldn't use it, but already used resources to film her. <laughs> I mean, that's possible, but you could have easily edited her out. But to me, she she was just not necessary. Not necessary. She added nothing to, to this documentary. But with that being said, the documentary still was very, very good. And let me just give you some of the highlights from it that stood out to me. Besides that Tom Girardi is 5'5". Five five. Everyone is so obsessed with that. And I get it. I just never thought of Tom Girardi's height. I just never thought of his height. I didn't assume he was tall. I honestly did not assume he was tall. I, I, I never really thought of his height. But if I really had to think of it, it's always the short ones. It's always the short ones trying to get over on us. Always trying to prove that they are the man. The man with power. You saw that part in the documentary that where he's he um, the, one of the attorney tells a story of him pointing to a judge and the judge comes running over because that's how much influence Tom Girardi had in California. The California bar released a statement saying that they're making reforms for some of the shady businesses, shady practices that Tom Girardi got away with during the complaints that they received in regards to Tom Girardi. For those that don't understand what is happening here, and I'm not going to pretend like I'm an attorney. So I'm not giving you the legal stuff. You know where you can go for the legal stuff. Shout out to my Taurus sister, Emily D Baker. You can go to her to break down the legal ramifications of what's going on and what will be happening for Emily, not for Emily, for Erica Jane and for Thomas Girardi. I'm just going to give you layman's. They're in trouble. <laughs> no, here, here we go. So basically, in regards to this documentary, what they lay out for us are the victims. That is the most powerful part of this documentary. They start off with, matter of fact, let me, let me show you a picture. Because this guy broke my heart. He lost, not only was he involved in such a tragic fire and, and explosion, but he also lost the love of his life. This poor man. And Tom was by his bedside in the hospital saying that he was going to take care of him. He was going to fight for him. And he just ended up stealing from him. Till this day, this man does not have the money that he won in, in the litigation. They had quite a few different uh, victims of Tom Girardi in this documentary. Um also, his mom and her best friend, Kathy and Kim. I Look, I always, I love that story. And it's so crazy to me that, you know, her, her son also got into a tragic accident and was forced, pretty much forced to use Tom because no other attorney would take her case because of her association with Girardi Keys. Oh, I just... It's such a tragic story. It's such a tragic story because who knows if everyone that did not get their settlements will get the money that they that they are owed. And as I said to you before, this poor guy. Hold on. I mean, 
because I think it's important that you see his face. We get to see him go to the doctor. We get to see his scars. We get to also understand that he is still, still suffering in regards to his injuries. Tom Girardi allegedly, I'll say allegedly, stole money from this man and countless others. Countless others. And probably will not serve jail time because, as you as you may know, it's been reported that he has dementia and uh, Alzheimer's. I'm not sure if I believe that, but we'll we, we look. We'll say this is what they're reporting. This is what they're reporting. But so does does that mean he gets away with it? He's currently living in his multi million dollar mansion right now until it's sold. When it's when it's sold, that money will be divvied up. It, it's a it's a sad sad situation and and I and part of the reason why I, I wouldn't I didn't plan to go live today. You know I I normally don't go live on Tuesdays. We will be live tomorrow um, to report on New York. Hopefully we'll see. I got construction going on, y'all. Look, it is what it is. Let me take a sip of my manifest my manifestation water. I need to do a video. I know you guys keep asking for it. <laughs> but um, we already have over 200 something people in the chat. Like this video. It's an easy and free way of supporting the channel. And also it allows and gets more people in the room. So be sure to do that if you would like for to support the channel. TikTok, if you wonder where I'm talking, head on over to the Kempire Daily YouTube channel. We're live talking about the housewife and the hustler. Housewife and the hustler. So here are some of the takeaways, some of the big takeaways. Shout out to my friends over at the Bravo Housewives on IG. This is because, you know, I didn't get like I like to watch these things multiple times and then take notes. I didn't get a chance to do that today, but I love that they broke this down. Here are the key takeaways from the Hulu documentary and ABC News documentary Housewife and the, the Housewife and the Hustler. So, as I said to you before, at the top, we learn in this deposition, the video, we get to see video of Tom confirming that he once had $80 million, maybe $50 million in cash, but now it's all gone. But where is it? Where is it? Matter of fact, let me, let me show this to you guys so you can see what I'm looking at. You know, I like to cite my sources. Let me just show it to you. Share screen. Let's go here. We'll remove me. There we go. So shout out again to Bravo Housewives on IG. So this is what we learned. He had $80 million in cash. Everyone's wondering where exactly is this, this money? He had $50 million in the stock portfolio. Where is this money? He, he lent $20 million to Erica Jane's LLC. He invested in her career. They they highlight that also. They highlight her complicity to this whole situation. Erica Jane might be innocent not knowing that he was taking this money, but she is having a good old time with, with the money. Having a good old time. All right. His time had $50 million in stock portfolio is now gone as well. They didn't show any any more of the footage on if they asked, you know, where is this money? What happened to the money? I do love how they break down what a lawyer is supposed to do once they receive a settlement. It's supposed to go into a separate account. Then the, you know, the legal fees should be taken out and then the rest should be given. I think it's supposed to be put in a trust for 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 the victims. Tom decided to put it in his his bank account, allegedly. We also learned Tom is being accused of loaning $20 million in funds from Girardi Keys to Erica Jane's entertainment company, EJ Global. Remember, this is a loan. So she has to pay that money back. I wonder if she even has that $20 million. Burn victims as well as orphans and widows of plane crash victims detail that Tom promised settlement funds over and over again, even promising one victim he'd invest the settlement funds with a guaranteed return. He he said he was going to invest the money for them. He was going to invest it. 
and he was going to guarantee a return. So he was just pretty much allegedly trying to wait off these people, trying to, you know, hold, you know, hold them off while he's spending their money. Allegedly. People were calling. And, th and this is what he allegedly did. <sighs> Tom will remain in his Pasadena mansion until it's sold. I hope they sell it quickly. And whoever's buying it, I think I hope y'all pay way more than it's worth. Just so that we can get the money that we need for these victims. This is horrendous. This is horrendous. I'm going to drop the call in like if you guys want to call in and share your thoughts and takeaways from this documentary. Because I could go on and on and on. Anyways, so here are some of the other thoughts that I had from this documentary. As I said to you before, if you're just tuning in with us, we have almost 300 people in the chat. Like this video. It's an easy and free way of supporting the channel. Here on Campfire Daily YouTube channel, you're getting daily and consistent hot topics in music, entertainment, reality TV, and more. This is sort of the more. We're breaking down a documentary. We're breaking down this documentary, The Housewife and the Hustler. I know a lot of people are saying, you know, this is, you know, Erica Jane is innocent. She didn't know. Look, I honestly believe that Erica Jane didn't necessarily know that Tom was doing this with people's money. I, I'm sure she probably thought, no, he's a top attorney. He's had so much influence. Let's talk about Tom's influence. We talked a little bit about what the California bar is saying, what they're going to do now. And when, er when Emily D. Baker was asked about on Up and Adam about whether or not people will end up suing because the bar, the California bar is admitting their guilt in this whole situation. I, she said, no, she said more than likely they wouldn't, they wouldn't do that. And I'm like, so they're just going to get away with it. Tom had so much influence, not just influence in the, the legal world, which is scary to me that he had that much influence, not just influence among his peers. He had influence over judges. Influence over judges. Is that how he won all his cases? Allegedly. <laughs> Let me keep saying allegedly. These, these YouTube streets are hot. <laughs> I hear cease and desist are going out. Anyways, let me focus. <laughs> um, yeah, so not only did he have influence in the legal, here goes my elephant brain. Oh, never forget. He had influence politically. Gavin Newsom was on Watch What Happens Live and confirmed that how much influence he had. And he had an evil grin when he did it too. What did you have to do for that, for that money, Gavin Newsom? I, I'm just I'm just dumbfounded, but I'm not surprised. And if, and if you know anything about politics, if you know anything about money or people with money and the amount of influence that they have had over the years on politics, on, you know, entertainment industry. That's why when I see situations like here on these YouTube streets where people are taking advantage of their own. Allegedly. It makes you think. It's like, dang, what? you know, a lot of people always say, you know, people that are billionaires, they they get there. They don't necessarily get there without unscrupulous behavior. I don't want to believe that because I plan to be a billionaire one day. I don't want to believe that because I don't want to believe I have to claw and gnaw and kill and drill and do all this kind of stuff in order to get to the level that I plan to get to. Just saying. Anyways, let's take some calls. <laughs> let's take some calls. Hold on, y'all. Let me just post the, um, let me just pin this. We have 
we have almost 300 people in the chat, y'all. Like this video. I haven't liked it already. I'm just still mad at the California bar. I'm mad at the politicians. I'm mad at that they allowed this man to get away for so many years with this sort of behavior. And he probably is going to get away with it. He might lose all his money, but he's, he, look, he's like 80 years old. How much more life does he have to live? And if he really, no, you know what? I'm going to leave it alone. I almost said something. I almost said something. And I, and I would have regret it. I'm going to take a couple of calls and then we're going to round this out because I didn't plan for this. I didn't plan to go live today. I didn't plan to go live. I just said, you know, what? I wanted to cover and recap this. So here we are. Don't forget to check out some of the videos that I've already posted on my social media and all here on the Kempire Daily YouTube channel. <laughs> Nicole says, have a shot every time Kempire says allegedly. I got to come up. I mean, I know I don't have to. I just sort of, I lay it thick with the allegedly. YouTube streets are hot. Okay. <laughs> Let me take a couple of calls. Finally, Justice, I'm going to bring you up. Hold on. Hey. Finally, Justice. Uh-oh. Okay, I'm about to drop you. Dorit, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm fantastic. What are your thoughts on this? Okay. You know, this just brings to mind that he is a mini Bernie, Bernie Madoff with his own take on a Ponzi scheme. Mm. He takes the money and he's going to invest it into what? Erica Jane Enterprises. Uh, and he just keeps funneling money into her business and uh, every time he, he closes a case, he pays out a little here, a little there, and just keeps the ball rolling. But eventually, he's going to run out of fuel, and he, he's, he's a train, train wreck uh, waiting to happen, and he's going to hit the wall going 120 miles an hour, and that's what happened here. You know, you just can't keep going on inevitably. Uh, it's a it's a crazy crazy situation, and it's just getting worse by the minute. Yeah, and you know with Daniel uh, Staub, I think it's because she worked in the same strip club as Erica Jane in Low Rise. Wait, Jersey. in the same decade? Yes. Did they? <laughs> yes. In the opening, if you paid attention, she said they worked, and it was a, a strip club next to the Bada Bing from The Sopranos. It was yes. a real, the Bada Bing was a real club for the wise guys. And right what? next door was a strip club. And that's where Erica worked along with Danielle. Well, she said that, but she didn't, she didn't really clarify if it was at the same time or in the same decade. <laughs> well, it, it had to be around the same time, you know, the same decade. <laughs> Dorit, thank you so much for calling in. Any other thoughts before I let you go? No, that's it. I'm just saying he's a miniature uh, Bernie. I'm going to start calling him Bernie. I, I honestly felt the same way. I felt the same way. Thank you so much for calling in, Dorit. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Emily D. Baker. Emily, did you hear that I was mentioning your name? Did I summon you? <laughs> Shout out to Emily. I love you, Emily. Just I, I was summoning you. I was summoning you. You can feel free to call in if you want to call in, Emily. If you want to call in, Emily, you can. But I know you're busy. I know you're busy. That's my Taurus sister. When I found out Emily was a Taurus, I was like, oh, this is why I love her. All right. Let's take a couple of calls. <laughs> Nini, I'm going to bring you up. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Nini? Hey, yes. Nini. Hey, Kimpire. How are you? What are you? What are your thoughts on this? Let me tell you. I want to know how did he blow fifty million dollars? Eighty million, possibly. Yes, that's what I'm just I'm floored by. And then I'm also upset that these that especially the victims of like the Lion plane crash, they left behind children, spouses, all, and he stole their money. And it's like he doesn't feel bad. Well, I think he. Tom allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if this is if this is true, Tom is evil. Yes, yes, very, very evil, very, very evil. And so, other, yeah, continue. Go ahead. Well, the other thing I was going to say is, I I don't think that necessarily Erica knew exactly what he was doing, but she had to have an idea of how much money he was making because I'm pretty sure she knew of the cases he was working on and knew. 
you know, okay, he gets, you know, 40% or 30% of a $10 million case, but clearly they're living better than that. So mm. I'm really wondering if she didn't know. I think, I don't think she completely knew mm -hmm. because I don't think she necessarily was like, oh, you know, I think she understood the power that he, he, he had in California and she just assumed. You know what I mean? I think she right. just assumed that the you know because of the power. Yes, of course, with the power comes the money. Who said that? <laughs> I forgot what rap song mm -hmm. that was. But you know what I mean. So I think that's what it was. But now that you know, how can you wear? How can you have those Birkin bags? How can you wear that the, the jewelry? I was exactly. like, oh, I don't want this. Right. But that's me. <laughs> Right. No, I'm the same way. I would be selling everything that he gave me. I don't care about this whole gifts thing. No. Give these people their money. They deserve it. Nene, I appreciate you calling in. Any thank other thoughts you. before I let you go? Um, no, nothing I can think of, but thank you. Of course, thank you. Curvy Jersey, I'm going to bring you up. Hey. Hey, Empire. How you feeling? Uh, girl, I'm mad. I'm mad at this <laughs> whole situation. <laughs> you and me, too. I saw the, um, the documentary yesterday, and it was a good documentary. Um, some people were commenting about Danielle being on there. And I think her purpose was to show uh, the mindset, the history of Erica. Um, like, you know, coming from Jersey. Well, she's from Georgia, but, you know, stripping in New Jersey, mm -hmm. um, having that hustler mentality um, type of thing. Um, as well as to show the uh, culture of the Housewives franchise, like, you know, keeping up with the Joneses. And, how, you know, having so much influence, money and, and connections um, makes you a good housewife. And, yeah. you know, they even show Jen Shaw and her situation um, and all that. So um, I think that was her purpose of being on the show. Um, all those housewives, they couldn't find a, not another one. <laughs> True, true. Well, they should. They did. They did highlight Teresa um, Yekudichi, but you know Danielle needs to check. So yeah. you know, let her let her get a you know let her get a check. So type of way that she's not on New Jersey anymore. Um, so with that said, Erica, I believe she knew something was going on, mm. but she didn't know the process. Like for instance. What I'm thinking is, Erica, she married this man without a prenup. Tom is not stupid. Why would you marry a woman without a prenup? Mm. And I think that was the start of his demise mm -hmm. because he had to keep up with the Joneses and keep her. I stay with you, Tom, as long as you funnel or help my career. Well, how much does it cost? I'm going to need 20 million. Oh, I need to go to work with this such and such producer. Well, how much? Uh, 15 million. She doesn't have her own. I don't think she's on a record label. I think she does this independently. So if that's the case, it costs money to distribute records and to go on tours and these things. And sadly, Tom may not thought, well, you know, maybe I shouldn't tap into this pile of money. Let me get it from my, my clients. And so... This is probably what spiraled out of control. Maybe Tom thought, okay, this is just going to be a hobby. But then it turned to a legitimate type of thing for her. Yeah. And that's how we got into this situation. Um, so that's one theory I do have. I do believe also that Tom may have been doing this before Erica. Um, oh, yeah. And so this here, um, it just shows you how some people can get away with things and some people cannot. You know, and, you know, for the fact that I think he's probably paying off judges and all these different things just to get some type of influence. And I think it will be in Erica's favor if she starts to sell off her belongings, like the other caller said, because she needs to redeem herself. You yeah. know, even if, you know, if I was married and my husband did some things and I'm gifted with the best my back and Lamborghinis and all these things, and I don't want my name to be tarnished. So I'm going to have to start selling my stuff to get myself to become more independent and more clear of the of the troubles that's going to be coming too close to my husband. And I think she needs to do the same thing, especially when you when when you want to have a career in the future. But maybe and look, let me put a theory out there with you, Curry, Curvy Jersey. Mm -hmm. Maybe she knows where this other money is. Oh, absolutely. 
And this is another thing too. Erica is not stupid either. Look at the history. She was in Georgia, and then she just you know moved to Jersey, um, and then she started doing her thing. So she knew she knows about influence. She, I remember her talking on the show um, when they went to Europe last year on how she met Tom and how she always had that fire getter type of spirit or energy. And granted, she knows she's a lot younger than Tom. It was a purposeful arrangement. So mm-hmm. Erica. Erica is a is a thug out in these streets, okay? So she knows what's good. She knows what's going on. She knows what's going on. So I, that's why I think that's why I think Erica knew something was happening, but she mm-hmm. may not know the actual detail of the process. Because mm-hmm. you know what the saying is, you know, ignorance is bliss. Just you know, make sure you bring, you know, just make sure you pay me, and then that's it. Because when it comes down to it, I don't want to ask no no one wants to ask me any questions because I want to say I don't know. And that's where I think Erica is. I don't know what happened. I do know that he gave me 20 mil for my musical career. That's all. <laughs> and that's not technically, that's not a lie. <laughs> uh, no, no, they, they, they have the records. Yeah. Yeah. Lord. Curvy Jersey, thank you so much for calling in. You're welcome. Take care. Have a great week. You too. Oh, yeah. I just remember it's only Tuesday. Lord, these streets are hot. <laughs> we have over we have almost 400 people in the chat including emily the emily D. baker dropped by shout out to her my tourist sister that's all them emily that i'm just going to refer to you as that going forward um, i'm going to bring up some familiar faces so we can discuss this and then round this out beverly's in the building hey. it's been, it's expensive to be me and queen lady what's going on y'all hey. Hey. all right i'm gonna stop I'm gonna I'm gonna start with Beverly, and just um just do me a favor, everyone. When you're not speaking, just mute your mic just to prevent any feedback or anything to happen happening. Um, Beverly, oh look at your outfit. What's going on? Well, you know, I've been called out. I swear, I this is the ring light on. And oh, I, the I can't call out here with my tank top. Call and- Eddie. <laughs> called out by her. I hope I look good. I hope you approve of my look today. Where I don't see any concealer on. Where's your concealer and foundation? Oh. I, I have no one knows I what you guys even talking about for a purpose. I want to look smart today. Okay, I want to look smart. But enough about me. Am wait, wait guys, smart? make make your wait. Stay on the line. Hold on, hold on. Stay on the line. We have an important caller that I need to ask some questions. Stay on the line. Okay. Hold on. I have an important call. My Taurus sister's here. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bounce anybody. I I had a minute. I was just pulling up all of the Erica Girardi's lawyers fire her documents. And, and that's why just, I said it was like Mayday Mayday because I needed to speak to you about this because I had no idea what I was reading. <laughs> I love that you put it in the universe. And I was like, I'm here. YouTube was like, Campire's Live. I'm like, oh, perfect. I'm going to read these documents. Here you talk about it. Thank you, YouTube gods. <laughs> right. Seriously. First of all, Emily, welcome to the page. I, I Thank you. Time. It's so nice to be here. It's so nice to see you. And I'm so glad I found you live and, and not just seeing you in the chat or on social media. So <laughs> thanks know. for having me. Oh, of course. First of all, what was your reaction to this documentary before we talk about this whole breaking news? The documentary? Um, I could have dealt with a little less Danielle Staub. Um, I didn't understand why she was just in there to throw shade. And that <laughs> seemed to be what she was in there for. But I like... This woman? <laughs> yeah, mm, with the white, with the all white trying to look like a mafia wife. I don't even know. That hair. With this. <laughs> I don't know. But... They asked her. I'm sure she is happy to dish on other housewives because I don't think she's going to be going back to the franchise. I don't know what that relationship's like with Bravo, but it's um, terrible. Yeah, <laughs> I would imagine after physically assaulting someone on the show by yanking a ponytail, you're probably not going to get invited back. No. So she's happy to f- find that where it lie. Um, y- you know, can't can't hate the hustle, but I really like how much they showed of what the Rui Gomez family went through. They yeah. showed the voicemails. They showed the manipulation. They showed the struggle. Cause I think without maybe paying as much attention, and I talk about this case so often, but you, the, the process they went through was 
Um, the horrible injury that he that he suffered, Joe Rue Gomez suffered. Yeah. His girlfriend passed in that gas line explosion. Then the years that it takes for the incident to go through the surgeries and the recovery, and then to get to the point where you get to a settlement. Then you're told that the money's coming and you're getting strung along with the money from somebody that you trusted and you're not sure how to go up against. Then you have suspicions about them. Then you have to find another attorney willing to go up against Tom Girardi when he knows at that time, the DA of the county, the, you know, the sheriff, the chief of LAPD, the judges, the judges on the Supreme Court, he knows everyone. So who do you find that's like, oh yeah, let's take that on. Let's take that on. Then found a lawyer, sued him, won. Then he wasn't paying the judgment. Then they had to go and get the judgment perfected back to court to go and attach the property. I mean, the years that they went through is, is mind blowing. And that I think they did a great job showing the, the story and then showing kind of the, the manipulative um, voicemails and stuff being like, it's this whole shell game of stringing people along. It's the same voicemails we heard in that lawsuit um, from Edelson PC, where they attached the audio files on SoundCloud. We're like, go Edelson PC, give us, <laughs> give us the voicemails. Let's hear them. <laughs> I think, like you said, I think it was brilliant of them on how they pieced this all together, because yeah. I think it was effective in, in causing emotion from all of us watching it. Um, but Speaking of this whole situation, there was breaking news right before we yes. went live. Can you explain to me what the, what does this, what does this mean, and what does this mean for Erica? I mean, absolutely. I haven't talked about this anywhere yet. I literally oh. saw Twitter exploded. Um, I'll probably make a short about it later, but Twitter exploded about it, and so I was like, "Oh, what's going on?" So I was pulling it up as I saw that you were live. So. <laughs> now we get to talk about it. Do you, but do you it, need me to pull up the document so you can? Uh, you can pull it up. I've got it on my end too. Okay. I'm just going to pull it up so I can split screen it. But if you want to pull it up so everybody can see it, you're welcome yes. to. It is, um, her, her attorneys are firing her as a client is what's happening. Oh, fun. Oh, so joy. there we go. And I think um, that deserves a shout out to Ron Richards on Twitter for sharing the document yes. to a document link. Um, He's going to be going after Erica. He is getting appointed in the other side. So this document comes from the, there's two bankruptcies, Girardi Keys, the law firm, and Tom Girardi, the person. Okay. So this is coming out of the bankruptcy of Tom Girardi, the person. Whether we'll see something get filed in the other side of the bankruptcy later today, totally possible. I believe it's the same law firm for both. But that's why this is to Jason Rund. He's the trustee for the Tom Girardi person bankruptcy versus okay. the Girardi Keese bankruptcy. Ron Richards is being hired in the Girardi Keese bankruptcy to go over money that might have gone from the law firm to Erica and Erica's company. Oh. This is the lawyers saying we can't be her lawyers anymore because the fundamental trust has been broken. So oh. on the second page, what they say is the relationship of trust and confidence. I think it's at one like 12. Oh, keep going. Page three. Oh, yep. No worries. There we go. Page three, line 12. It's so easy when the lines line up. This is why the lines line up. <laughs> so we can call it out and be like, okay, so page three, line 12, this is what it is. The relationship of trust and confidence that's essential to a properly functioning attorney-client relationship has broken down. And mm -hmm. in the good faith assessment of counsel, the relationship is irreparable. Ooh. This this is either, this, this is, she's not telling us what we need to know to actually represent her. She's not telling us what we need to do our job. We don't think she is being honest with us. Oh my God. Uh-huh. Emily, this is exactly, see the, 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 the YouTube universe gods needed you here to break this needed down. Needed us said, to happen. <laughs> I, I brought this up and I said, guys, I have no idea what this means. <laughs> this is a big deal. This is, you don't often see attorneys moving to withdraw. I mean, you'll see it if attorneys aren't getting paid and it's like, I can't keep representing this person. They stopped paying me six months ago and there's no hope of fixing it. But I am very surprised to see, I I, I, I couldn't fathom that this is what we would see from her attorneys. Her attorneys still owe her a duty of confidentiality. They can't really say much more to the court. This is the like magic legal words of the trust and confidence is broken. 
The attorneys didn't break the trust and confidence. The attorneys owe her a legal duty of trust and confidence. It's what you pay your lawyers for. They do not have trust and confidence that she is being forthcoming with them and they can actually represent her. I don't know what happened. I don't, I, the timing feels weird with the documentary yesterday. That yeah. might not even be part of it because they notified her of this yesterday is what this motion says. We told her yesterday we can no longer represent her. So these conversations were probably happening. It got to a point where it's clear that whatever issue is going on between the two of them, it's not going to be fixed. So they filed this motion with the court today. So, so her attorneys fired her as a client or firing her as a client and cannot represent her and are withdrawing are telling the court, we don't represent her anymore. Oh, the court doesn't have to grant it. The court can be like, um, I can't let you out of this. The court will likely grant it because there's room for another attorney to come in. But now Erica has to go find other attorneys, which is going to be time consuming and stressful because this bankruptcy is a big deal. And not all attorneys want to take on something that's so very much in the public eye. So she's dealing with this situation. She's also dealing with her divorce. This cannot be good. This has got to be tremendously stressful. I am, I, and in, depending on the mood, it could also be infuriating. Like, I can't believe it. But if attorneys can only do their job, if their clients are honest with them, you can't get somebody's back. If you don't know what else is behind them, they have to tell you the only one who knows everything that they're facing is Erica. And she can disclose everything that she knows to attorneys. They can't go sell it to the media. They can't go tell it to prosecutors. It is between her and the lawyers. But if she doesn't do that, they can't do their job. What, what is your speculation on what's going on here with her, why she's not being honest with her own attorneys? <sighs> I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, this, could this have been something else? Could she have, could she have been talking? They wouldn't leave for that though. If she was talking about her case elsewhere that was damaging the case, they wouldn't leave. Like the, this is a, a big move on leaving and the attorneys can't ever disclose more. Why? Um, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know if she thought she would tell them just enough. Um, I don't know if she thought she had disclosed enough or if she's like, I don't want to talk about it, fix it, like deal with it. It's the bankruptcy. I'm not involved. I don't know if she's taken a position that they can't legally defend. And she's saying, no, um, all of this is what it is. And they're like, we can't legally defend that position. And she's like, no, that's what's happening. And then it broke down from there. That's possible. This, this is not a, a, a lawyer legal question. It's just a personal question. What do you believe in this in this whole Tom and Erica situation? Do you think she knows more? Do you think Tom really has dementia and Alzheimer's? I don't know. And I try really to keep my opinion out of it because to the legal breakdown of the stuff, my opinion is really irrelevant. Mm -hmm. But the the timing of the Alzheimer's is very suspicious. The If I believe he has Alzheimer's, and I have pro either way, it's a problem. If he doesn't, then somebody's perpetrating a fraud on the court to avoid responsibility. And that's horrific and disgusting. But if he does, then people in his life have been either helping him cover up or saw the signs and said nothing. And there's potentially clients he's been meeting with and signing and advising on cases when he was maybe not mentally fit to do so, which is also horrifying. So yeah. either way, it's really bad. If, if he doesn't, then it's really bad. And if he does, it's also really bad. Um, I hope that at some point, the courts, as they're looking into all of this, talk to either the current clients that were talking to him, the other lawyers at the firm who were working with the, him to see if they if they knew anything. I mean, for the conservatorship, that's not going to happen. But if there's potential criminal proceedings, it might. But what the conservatorship has done is done. They've put him under a conservatorship. And it is what it is. You know, here in the channel, we like to cite our sources. So I cite you often because I'm like, I'm not a lawyer, y'all. <laughs> I'm not I, a lawyer. I am a lawyer. It's just so wild. The timing of the conservatorship is suspect. And that's part of this. But if he was trying to get along with this law practice and being like, oh, you know, the money's here, the money's there. Th there's a lot of questions about it. I don't know what Erica knew. I think it's hard to believe that she didn't know at least about the Rui Gomez family, mm -hmm. knowing that they were going through depositions, knowing that they were um, pursuing this very loudly and publicly. At some point, she had to have known about at least that case. Did she know the full extent? 
I don't know if we'll ever know. Ugh. She Ugh. sure didn't act. She sure didn't act shocked and horrified when all of the, the house of cards came collapsing. Did she? No. And she's still very, very cold and stone faced about this. Um, one of the things, and I, I, when I was saying that I cited you was when you would stop by up and Adam and you were talking about Adam asked you the question, whether or not, you know, the California bar would be liable for some of the cases, you know, if they would end up suing later on. And you said, probably not. Why? It's hard. So the, the state bars are a uh, oversight agency for attorneys that is there to protect the public, but essentially they're a wing of the court and it's, it's, you can't really appeal them not doing it normally in the courts. If the courts get it wrong, you appeal it to the next court and say, judge, look at what this judge did. They got it wrong. Um, so the process, and I haven't, I've asked other lawyers about it too. I'm like, what would even be the process for this? And, and none of us have a good answer on it's, it's a quasi judicial branch of the court that oversees lawyers, but it's also a government regulatory agency. So I, I don't know if the rules would apply and I don't know if you could find attorneys willing to sue the organization that licenses them. It becomes a very tricky um, a very tricky thing. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, there are legislatures. Take a step. Go ahead, girl. <laughs> it's been a, it's been, it's been a busy day. Um, there are now members of the California legislature speaking out against it. And I think asking your members, if you're in California, your members of state Senate and state Congress to look into the California state bar and raise the questions because they control that entity. So a lot, it always feels weird to say, allow the government to regulate itself. I mean, ugh. but <laughs> that might be the first step about figuring out what can be done because the state bar um, let people down in not taking this more seriously and not dealing with this. I mean, you saw it in the, do in, in the hustler and the housewife mess with clients money get disbarred like it is a it's a it's a monorail it's a one-way street mess with client money get disbarred and the la times said there were over a hundred lawsuits how 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 lawyers in law school you're told like you mess with client money once five dollars goes missing license is gone Whoa. You, you you put four pennies aside you're going to be investigated so for lawyers everywhere seeing this breakdown you're like wait a second how how for you how how for decades not years decades for decades these cases go back decades so even if there was even if there is um mental decline involved that doesn't track back all that way mm. emily i appreciate you taking the time i know you've had a long day <laughs> I, you're my Taurus sister <laughs> I, I love it's you. So good. It's so good to get to chat. I'm sorry yeah. that the throat's getting weird. I yeah. saw I saw Beverly in the chat said that she had questions. I'm happy to say hello and then and then let myself let myself out if if you want. Beverly. I didn't want to. No, Beverly, you had questions. Hey, my name is Miriam. I'm just joking about <laughs> Beverly. My, my question for you is: Don't you think this was because I never felt the love? between Erica and uh, and Tom, I always felt it was an agreement. How about since he used to do that and it goes back, just like what you said now, uh, it was part of a plot. Like when he met her, he said, hey, we will get married, no prenup. I'll fund your dreams to be an entertainer and we're gonna do this. Of course, it wasn't from the, from the first time, but uh, the, I, it's hard for me to believe that Erica won't be held liable. At least she has to file for bankruptcy because these, the money were, were loaned, like were loaned to her. So it's a loan in the Erica Jane, Erica Jahoy, in a Pretty Mass Productions. I don't know. But like, wouldn't she be liable? And don't you think that they might find um, uh, something on her? that she knew and this is why the divorce between her and her legal team just happened um i well i don't know about the breakdown with the legal team there could be a lot that goes on there uh, could i mean anything's possible could tom have been like hey i'm gonna use my third wife to essentially launder money from my law firm out into jewelry and paintings and what have you 
I, anything is possible, but if there's a paper trail, there's a paper trail and the U S we know it's been referred to the U S attorneys for investigation and they have the money to do that investigation. Um, I always saw on the show, and again, it's a show I saw admiration between the two of them, um, which seemed appropriate with their age gap and for his position as a lawyer. It never read weird to me because uh, having the public persona he does, I wouldn't expect him to be much more um, showy on the show than he was with her. But there are stuff came out in the LA Times that he was showing her music videos at bar association stuff. And at his and uh, that blew me away because the lawyers are like what we're not here for. Um, but if there are loans from the law firm to Erica's companies, those will have to be paid back. Those should go back to the bankruptcy court. It's what Ron Richards is being hired to track down. Now, granted, he'll get 30 to 45% of whatever he recovers, but Ooh. that's lawyer fees. That's what he's being hired to track down. So if there are those loans, she could have to pay it back. And her doing that could involve her business filing for bankruptcy. But if there's assets there, that will have to be dealt with. Um, so where the assets are, you know, everybody's seen it on the show. It's not like all of a sudden the Jaguar ring can be gone. Someone is going to be asking, where is this stuff? And in the the bankruptcy where they're going after her personal property, which is the personal side of the bankruptcy, the Axe Law Firm, uh, Trazian, I think I'm pronouncing it correctly, was hired by the bankruptcy court to go after her personal property. Paintings, jewelry, clothes, things that can be taken back saying, no, this is community property between the two of you. It was bought during the marriage and it is going into the bankruptcy estate and getting sold. So we're, we're not done seeing them try to pull every penny out of Erica that they can. Does that mean she is criminally liable? Not necessarily. Does it mean there will be a criminal prosecution? Not necessarily. Does it mean they are going to try to fleece every cent back from her that they can? I think so. I don't think the attorneys have any empathy for her at all. I have one last question regarding that. Isn't it, since it's community property, don't they own everything together and they are in debt together? If they, so there was a prenup? Th they own, they own everything together that was bought during the course of the marriage that is not exempt. So what about the, the house, the house was purchased before. So the house is his. Yes. But the house is getting sold and the house is mortgaged up seven sides and down the other. Oh, the other property that was purchased, she's arguing are gifts that are exempt. And under the rules of California, there is some room for gifts. What the attorneys that are going to try to come to an agreement with her attorneys short of suing her for are going to say is not all of these are gifts. Not everything, not every piece of jewelry he bought you during the course of your marriage is a gift. And she's going to argue they're all gifts. They are all mine. They stay with me. I think it would go a long way for her from a PR and fan standpoint if they're able to reach an agreement where she can say, look, these things were kind of our top gifts. This was our 10-year wedding anniversary, our 20-year anniversary. These things were actually gifts. The rest of this, put it back into the bankruptcy what estate. What about that accumulated as uh, a couple? If he accumulated debt, isn't she liable for having it? She's listed as a co-debtor on quite a lot of the personal debts. And I went through those on my channel. There's like racehorses and vet bills and the, they weren't paying the gardener. Like just pay the groundskeepers. What are you, what? So I went through that breakdown of debts on my channel. There's a lot of them. And she's listed as a co-debtor on a substantial number of them. Oh my so God. Miriam, Miriam, stay on the line. Stay on the line, okay? So- Emily, thank you so much. I, I, I look. I understand the voice thing. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> you sound lovely. I oh. am like wrecked. You look refreshed and youthful. <laughs> I am like no, haggard you look and beautiful. Nice. My Taurus sister, I appreciate you. Have to come I back. Appreciate I appreciate you. I, I, I see the Jen Shaw situation is boiling over too. We'll oh. plan it. So much tea came out from her defense team. We have to. And I'm so we'll happy that we were it. able to have you on here because I Thank had you. no idea. had no idea. We will cite our sources in the description of the video so you Perfect. guys can follow Emily as well. Emily, thank you so much for calling in. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Uh, I love these moments on, on social media. I love stuff like this. People just call in. We get exclusives. Emily D. Baker calls in and gives us a, a breakdown of the legal situation. My technology is acting up a little bit, but it's all right. It's all right. 
All right, so let me take some callers so that we can we can round out this conversation. I'm gonna bring back Beverly. <laughs> She's like, my name is not Beverly. It's well, Miriam. Yeah, I have to clarify. I'm gonna call you Beverly going forward, though. Okay, I don't oh. have a problem. I'm here to defend Beverly. Okay, hold your thought because you got some questions in with Emily. So let's go to it's expensive to be me. <laughs> Danielle. Hey there. Thoughts on this whole situation. I'm so glad that Emily called in because I really didn't realize the depth of what this breaking news meant in regards to Erica Jane. I didn't even know the breaking news. I've been on my patio eating crabs. So I didn't even know the breaking news until you was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait I'm staying on the line. I got another caller. And then I'm sitting there watching it all happen. So I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> she says she's eating crabs. Okay, I'm so I'm so happy that you guys can have this this type of life. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness, I don't even know. Okay, so before Emily called in and dropped a bomb load, we were talking about the foolishness of Danielle being on there. I could have done without her. I could really use a part two. I really yes. could use another. I, like I really, it was so good. I really feel like there's so much more to dig into. And I'm here for the digging, and I'm uh -huh. here, and I'll I'll help dig if they need help. I'll help dig. Just tell me where to, where to dig. I'm like I'm here. For I it. definitely think there needs to be a part two, though. I agree. Yes, because there's and and maybe there will be. Maybe once they get more, right now, I feel like so much has happened. Maybe they could be planning and and editing a part two right now. We don't know. It could be coming. Who knows? I'm sure. And based off of what we just heard, this breaking news and the way that Emily broke it down, wh what what is she not telling her attorneys? So that gives us the, the breaking news gives us takes us to part three and four alone. <laughs> oh damn, Queen Lady, thoughts on this? This first of all, the documentary and the breaking news. Okay, I'm gonna start with the breaking news first because then that fucked up. Oh, excuse my language. That that messed up my whole conversation because I'm gonna be honest. Like I was in a depression. Like if she divorced and under the impressions of allegedly finding out of all these lawsuits coming up. So she got out, like, you know, I'm not with this. This was before my time, sir. I'm not trying to get caught up in this mess. That's uh -uh. It's not before her time. It's during her time. It was before and during her time. But if she didn't know, like, she, oh. she had her Phaedra hat on, and she didn't know. <laughs> not her Phaedra hat. Yeah. Like, you know, she didn't know. It, it was going on in the house, but she didn't know. <laughs> if you don't know, you don't know. So she got on out of it. Like, did you crazy. hear? What, did you hear what Emily said though? Emily said that it, she knew at least about Joe um, Ruiz Gomez's story and in that situation. So she knew about at least that particular situation. And, and in that situation, she should have been the one to rectify that and be woman enough to be like, my husband was wrong in this case. Let me help this man right here. You Just know that one. Cause, cause that that was the one that she they they, they got proof on. That's the one they got proof on. You know, I'm gonna be honest. That's the one they got proof on. That's the one that won't help. But I honestly feel like morally, she should get some of the stuff back. But honestly, if you're not liable, she's not gonna she's not gonna give anything back. Let's be real. Let's be real in the real life in the real world. This is that's not how it's gonna work. But you know, but the thing is. PR, you know, the public relations stand, stance on this, it's not going to be good for her in the long run. But that, unless, that, that unless she has money hidden somewhere that we don't know about. But that's what I'm like, in privilege, you understand? When we talk about privilege, it's the difference because let had the coin be flipped and we know how that will go on the other side. So it's Wait, just. Wait, I need you to break that down because people can't read between lines some days. Well, all right. So I'll put it straight out there. Let her been black. And let this be a, a, a housewife of Atlanta. Oh. And, and um, let that have been one of those situations. It wouldn't have went this way. You see how Phaedra ducked hide and got a phone out of there. She was not with it because <laughs> we know how to, and that she's a lawyer. A Is lawyer. she? <laughs> she knew what was hitting for. My husband is a criminal. He, he's done been in jail for the type, these type of things before. I got to duck hot and get up out of here. D duck roll. Duck tuck not, and roll. Not duck and roll. Yeah, duck tuck and roll. <laughs> Shante, what were your thoughts, first of all, on the breaking news? I'm not sure if you saw the breaking news, but also on this whole documentary that came out just yesterday. Yes. Oh, right. So first on the breaking news, to get fired by your legal team 
it's, it's the thing about being married to a well-connected lawyer like Tom's writer. You're either well-connected or you're going to be well-rejected. So the fact that she had already been able to get some high-powered legal team and then they dropped her, mm. it's saying a lot about, like somebody mentioned, what she's not saying, not so much what she is. So mm. I'm thinking she probably, she's either, she either feels very like, you know what, F it. I'm, I'm just going to deal with the consequences as they come. Or she's saying, F it. I know I'm going to come up, rise above this. But if you don't have any legal team, especially at a time like right now, all of this stuff has been put out there. All of this stuff has been exposed. And I don't know if you all mentioned it already and, and touched on it. But one thing I noticed, even if she did not really genuinely directly know exactly what he was doing, the fact that she's connected to it, because I don't know if you noticed yesterday, it had her listed as a secretary on one of his pieces of documentation. Oh. So think about that. She's she's connected maybe indirectly. That you know, maybe she might have told Tom at the top of the marriage, yes, you can put my name on stuff for your business for this purpose. Because there might be certain things where you need more a certain amount of people on a piece yeah. of documentation. Yeah. And they don't necessarily always have to be strictly connected to the firm, but it's somebody that something like that. Mm -hmm. So she, she's gotten herself in enough trouble, just like how they were talking about Joe and Teresa, when Teresa signed those documents for Joe and she didn't know she was signing. And then she wound up doing time in prison for it. So this is why I don't care who you're married to. I don't care how well you all know business. I don't care how you all have done things before and it's always worked out. People read your documentation. <laughs> <laughs> Read your documentation. Look, or get a good lawyer because I said to you for I was trying to read that legal document and I couldn't mm -hmm. make sense of it. Thank God Emily called in and, and broke and broke it down for us because I was like, oh, that's what it's saying. Right. Oh, that, 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 that I, I just remember mind. sorry to yeah, I just that remember her name being put on that. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Let's not talk over each other. I'm sorry, but that's what changed my mind. She brought up a good point was if their legal team is leaving you, there's a lot more underneath that that cover. So that's what changed my mind. So maybe she is lying. Mm -hmm. and there's a lot more to the, to the story that we're not hearing on her behalf. And if that's right. the case, then she needs to have her feet held to the fire and pay that pay that debt too. Mm -hmm. Right, because you can't tell me this divorce wasn't strategic. Like when she dropped that bombshell about him cheating with that lady who was a judge, Again, it's probably one of those things where Erica found out and knew about this from the jump, but she decided to hold on to it or just overlook it. But now she figures, you know what? Let me put this out there as my trump card. Mm, you know, not your it's, trump it's, card. And it's coincidental <laughs> right. that he got amnesia. She's, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. wait that, look, Queen Lady, I know you're new to the channel, but we don't overtalk everyone because it does feedback, then people can't hear each other. I'm so sorry. Mute, mute no, your mic. Mute your mic. Mute, mute, mute your mic. It was that amnesia for me, though. They both uh, got amnesia now. Uh -huh. He got it now. She had it then. <laughs> it's just crazy. So it's one of those things where I'm putting pieces together because we also remember Tom told Erica when they got married, look, I'm not wearing a ring. I don't wear a ring, blah, blah, blah. He clearly had a bunch of sugar babies. Maybe he was just married to Erica because he, you know, she was like his real companion. But it wasn't like a marriage marriage in that sense. That's him not wearing a ring. Number mm -hmm. one, per se. And then aside from that, like I said, she pro this is probably one of the women he just carried on with. Erica knew. She, like I said, Erica was the wife. They just had that type of unconventional marriage and unconventional understanding. And for whatever reason, she just held on to that. And this is where she found it to use in handy. And it's like, no, that's not going to work. <laughs> Everybody, mm -hmm. they, they, done, they done pulled your number. They done pulled your car, hussy. We not mm. not no, uh -uh. I, I got your number, Huzzy. <laughs> <laughs> Beverly, <laughs> you have to, what, 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 I know you have plenty of thoughts. Yes. First, I think uh, uh, Danielle Staub being there, opening act, she was invited. She wasn't trying to be relevant. She can't impose herself on ABC. Come on. Let's give it her, let's give her credit where credit is due. She she was invited and they used her for the shock factor because they know that people don't know her. But then again, what is the best way to talk about trash than having trash talk itself? Oh, my God. <laughs> You're calling her trash? Uh, her words, Beverly, not mine. 
I don't know uh, Beverly, but I put the heart next to her name so that like I I really have like kind of a soft spot for Danielle because I feel like you she's remember where that. remember what state you live in, Beverly? Yes, I know. We might bump into each other, but here I am to defend her. She is very relevant, being on an like, opening act. She's showing the pattern that Bravo is using in recruiting their talent. And it's very telling that not one, not two, not only three talents. At this point, we lost count. If we go to the, Vum the Vanderpump kids, uh, how many of them have legal troubles? It seems like they have a legal team that know, oh, this will come up. Let them be part of our family. So when it sur comes to surface, we have the scoop. We have cameras there and what have you. I feel like... Uh, Are you looking the, at notes? Yes, I oh. did. <laughs> I was taking notes because a lot of your of the callers today, they brought up uh, a good point. Uh, someone said that I, I, I feel like that was the beginning of the plot when they, became, when they came together. Because she is listed as a secretary. She co-signs. In, uh, in loans and she was a very good source to money launder because uh, Tom is no dummy. So he can say, I don't have the money because I was spending on all the lavish style of my wife. And it got to a point that he became so like uh, um, arrogant and untouchable. He felt he was untouchable, that he thought it was a good idea to bring his wife to let her do the show. Mm. He was he was supportive of that. We all know uh, if we're gonna believe the uh, the ice queen, the the ugly mess who is Erica Jane, Erica Jehoy. I don't know what to call her. Just like Adam, he, <laughs> he, he mentions her. So for me, she will only be held accountable when her friends or her castmates start holding her accountable and her current employer. Mm. She mm -mm. has Bravo, no you mean. consequences. Nobody dropped her like they dropped Chrissy Teigen from, uh, you know. And when you compare what Chrissy Teigen did to this, uh, I feel like this is worse. Not that that's good, but I feel no. like this is worse. And so for much less, when you're a person of color, like Queen said, you get dropped out of deals. You lose credibility. And then they let you be hammered publicly. OK, yeah. I'm not saying she doesn't deserve and I, I'm liking this moment that she's being held accountable. I feel like Chrissy Teigen will grow mature out of this because she's a funny person. She was just reckless in the way she carried out things. So this will be a learning curve for her, I hope, because she's still young. But this is I'm just bringing her up just to show how different they are in holding people of color accountable and how they don't like uh, uh, what's his name? Andy's not even bringing up uh, uh, Chrissy Teigen anymore. And she's one of the biggest celebrity fans of Housewives. Mm. She helped put Housewives also in the map with the younger generation because she is a huge fan. He's not bringing her up anymore. Rightfully he, so. Bad PR. But let's, well, let's focus exactly. wrap around this out. I mean. have an appointment. We have to wrap around this out. Any last minute thoughts, um, uh, Beverly? I hope that uh, Beverly, I'm glad she's there. I hope there's a part two, just like they said. <laughs> she, it was very appropriate to have her there. And I loved seeing uh, Heather over there in McDonald. I, I, I love Juicy. I'm a Juicy Scooper. So I loved her being there because she follows these stories from the get go. I love the production, and I hope that victim, at least he gets mm, all of them. what the money he deserves. He broke my heart, and he showed so much strength. I think like he's very inspirational. Uh, just the way he's saying, I'm wearing my scars proud. Mm. I'm having the chills now. Yeah, yeah. Miriam, thank you so much for calling in, as always. Queen Lady, last-minute thoughts? Yes, I just want to say thank you again. And I apologize for interjecting. That's okay. um, and lastly, I just, as I said before, like when it comes to the other side of the coin and Matt Riam's got it, got it out for me, I I would want to see more people of higher power. Like I ain't gonna front, they got Aunt Becky. They did it to Aunt Becky. I was happy to see that because if, <laughs> no, seriously, because th when that black lady had did it to just get her her son in a better mm. public school, that was crazy. She got all that time in jail. Like it was crazy. 
but look at the time on Becky got. It's mm -hmm. just still, the, 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 it, it's just, it just don't equal out. So it's just like, that's why I would just love to see more accountability and more people being held to it. So, but if, if she ain't know, she keep her stuff. <laughs> she said she can keep her stuff. I we love ladies, thank you so much for calling in. Shantae, last minute thoughts. Yes. So we definitely need a part two to the special. Um, because as you said, I thought that we were probably going to see Erica leave in the middle of this season, but she clearly is going to finish out the rest of this one. So yeah, we're definitely going to be on pins and needles waiting to see where she comes up with next season, if she's on next season. Um, I can't imagine she would want to be the way everybody is like coming after her with the pitchforks. Yeah, well, and just, unless you she know, needs the money. Well, yeah, well, that too. But then I'm wondering how much she's. I'm wondering how much she's made touring and album sales because she's. Oh, actually, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? No, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying because here again, she she she's she does a little better over over in Europe than she does here, mm -hmm. and she's even charted on the Billboard. So <laughs> at the end of the day, if her glam squad doesn't abandon her and they still fucking with her tour wise, she might want to see if she can open up for Kylie Minogue or something. Oh my goodness! You have a lot of hope for for the pretty mess. Thank you, uh, Shante, for calling in. All right, we're we weren't able to get to everyone's calls, but I do want to take this moment to thank Emily D. Baker for calling in and breaking this stuff down for us. We have over five hundred and something people, almost six hundred people in the chat. Like this video if you haven't liked it already. Subscribe to the channel. This is where you're getting daily and consistent hot topics. And every once in a while, we get an exclusive interview. And I love it. I love the internet. <laughs> Guys, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to follow me on my social media. And I'll be posting Emily D. Baker's uh, YouTube information in the description of this video. Shout out to my mom. Shout out to everyone that sent in a super chat and liked this video. I appreciate you being here. Have a wonderful night. I got to go. I got to get out of here. I got appointments. I got things to do, y'all. Busy today. Busy. <laughs>